Hey everyone, in the previous video I taught you how to reverse a list and I'm going to be teaching you a new way to do that and also a new concept known as a reverse iterator. So psh, I know I told you guys we we're going to review but I want to do one more thing before we jumped into that. So what in the world are we going to be doing? Well instead of swapping the individual elements within a list, I thought hey why don't you just go through a list and copy them to another list but just go from the opposite direction, you know starting at the end take the last element, put it at the beginning, and so forth. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you in this video. So here's what we're gonna do. You can iterate through a list using a for loop for item in data, and then you can print that item just to see it. So this is how you iterate through all the elements. And you can see it goes from A to H. However, what if we wanted to go from H to A? So we iterate through the elements, but just starting at the end. Well, for that, you can use this function called reversed. Now, doing this doesn't reverse the list. It actually just creates a reversed iterator. So, documentation, fun, right? But an iterator allows us to go through the elements sequentially. This is going to work the same way. It's just going to go through them the other direction. So, looking into iterator, it's an object representing a stream of data, or in other words, a sequence of elements yada 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 we don't really care about all that junk so here's what we're gonna do we're just going to print the elements now and see that it does in fact go in the opposite direction so what you could do is you can make a new list such as data reversed and then just make it an empty list and instead of printing the item we can append it to data reversed so data reversed dot append item and then at the end instead of printing data we're actually going to print data underscore reversed and running this you can see it does the trick and you can also confirm that data was in fact unchanged so running this you can see this is the original list and this is the new list in terms of performance this isn't a whole lot better or worse than the the previous example i showed you in the last video however you do have to create a new list in this scenario so if you have a really, really huge list that takes up a ton of memory and you have to copy all of that to another list, that might be a problem. So it really just depends on if you need to reverse the elements in place or if creating a new list is okay. In our situation, it's fine. It's probably not gonna be an issue until you're working with a ton of data. So either one, whichever's clearer to you, go for it. And there's probably a quadrillion different other ways to do this. There's always a million ways to do things in programming. <laughs> 